Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Hallelujah. To the ends of the earth. Praise God. His name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We join in the choir in heaven. We join with all of creation. We join with you who's at home. Hallelujah. Lifting our voice unto the Most High God. Celebrating His excellence. Hallelujah. Honoring Him. Worshiping Him. Praise God. Magnifying His holy name. Back together with you in the evening. <clears throat> Praise God on this incredible day. This, 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 this momentous, awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. Deserves all of the honor that is due unto it. Happy Mother's Day to you who's watching. Praise God. We spent an incredible time together, not only in worship, but in fellowship and in the preaching and in the chat and in just a community body and fellowship in the morning. We hope you were here for that. Back again this evening to do the very same thing. Few things, praise God, if any, can trump when the people of God come together, no matter what the form or fashion to lift up the Most High God, to honor the occasion, and to spend some time in worship and in the fellowship of the Word. Praise God. And so we want to honor you, each and every mother that's watching at home. It's our distinct pleasure. It's our delight to be able to send you on behalf of our pastor, the ministers who are here, the most warm, happy Mother's Day to you. Praise God. If you're in the chat right now, you want to go ahead and refill it up with that love praise God that chat section is a ministry all by itself praise God hallelujah and as you're scrolling and reading we're asking that you be blessed and this is a fit time perfect time that we transfer that same level of honor onto you if you're the first or second time here with us praise God we want to honor you in the same way in the same weight praise God because we do all of what we do with the intention that the glory of the Lord would be risen upon you in your life, wherever you're watching from. And we appreciate that you choose to spend some time with us when we broadcast. Praise God. And so if you haven't already, we ask that you go ahead and follow, like, and subscribe to all of the social channels. Wherever we can be found on, we are intentional about the content that we put out, trusting it's going to believe uh, rather be a blessing unto you. And of course, we don't, also, we don't only want to bless you through content. We also want to make some connections. And so we invite you to introduce yourself in the chat. Allow for us to engage with you. Let us know where you're viewing from, of course. And uh, we'll do our best as a community, as a family, to honor you. Praise God. Reach out to us throughout the week. Visit the website for more information. And, of course, as we go forward to our family who is so faithful in support, God bless you richly. Amen. And just a few announcements as we go into our evening service virtual symposium happening on Thursday that is May the 13th and of course this is being held by our youth ministry uh, for parents and this is where now you have the opportunity to bring any questions or concerns that you may have praise God that the youth ministry might be able to address if that's something that you feel you'd like to raise or if it's something you'd like to commend or if you'd like to share in the discussion then we invite you to that very specific occasion that is the 13th of May at 8 p.m. and the youth ministry looks to meet with you and be a blessing the link will be found on the events page of our website closer to the day praise God. So make sure that that day is marked in your calendar. We have been in an awesome collection effort to bless our community. We are honored that we have such faithful and loving and committed support from our community, our faithful members, those who have been watching the broadcast and it was laid on their heart to join in on this effort. All of you have come together to make this what a blessing praise God that it's going to be when we on that day bring all of these goods. You know, it's a tangible expression of our love onto the community. May not be the biggest or uh, greatest thing in your mind, but to the person who's receiving, who's truly in need, they will say thank you. And it's an opportunity to reach out to them about the gospel as well. So please, if you haven't already, make sure that you've gotten in on that effort as we're closing up May 29th fast approaching. We look to continue strong and deliver in excellence. Amen. Praise God. 
and Pentecost being the uh, very, very fast approaching service we're looking forward to. We have some things that are lined up to better prepare you, help you to understand what it is that we're going into. And so, of course, that Sunday is May 23rd, both 11 a.m. and 6.30 as we normally meet with you. Uh, but of course, in the highest level of honor and reverence as we consider Pentecost in perpetuity. In other words, endless, forever, eternal, continual. And that thought is going to be opened up to you. So we look forward to make sure that you are in the know. And so there is going to be a devotional booklet available to you on the 12th and the 13th um, in this coming week. And of course, you can visit apcpickering.com if you are a little bit more um, tech savvy, if you'd prefer a uh, physical copy, then of course, the 12th and the 13th, you'll be able to pick that up at the uh, assembly here or at, uh, you know, have it mailed out to you. You'll have to reach out to us. But we want to make sure it gets into your hand one way or the other. That information is going to be crucial. It's going to help you to appreciate pen to cost. Praise God. And of course, we're going to be having a panel discussion on that very uh, subject, and that will be the 19th of May. That will be a Wednesday. And of course, we're looking to ensure that all who are watching are blessed. So many incredible opportunities for us to appreciate this very specific and unique day, and we don't want you to miss any of them. Please do make a best effort to be a part, because this is the heritage, praise God, of our faith. And of course, as we move forward in strength, prayer being brought before the throne of grace, we want to invite you again, praise God, if you haven't already done so, to submit your requests in the chat. When you do that, there are people who read and pray at the very moment that they are able to see. There are people who carry that request again and take it to a group of praying people who are here behind the scenes working on your behalf. And of course, we continue as we are praying daily in the week on our prayer line. And of course, it's that 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 request meets God in so many different areas. We don't want you to miss not one of them. Please take that serious, of course, uh, and you can visit the website throughout the week. We want to be able to pray with you and be a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. The reading of the week, the time that we as a congregation spend together in the Bible uh, throughout the week on top of our personal devotion is taken from the book of Esther. It's chapter 8 through to chapter 10, and that's a correction from our earlier service, moving into chap uh, rather Acts chapter 1 through to chapter 3 as we fast approach Pentecost. It's an incredible transition. Please do your best to stay with us right now. Praise God. We're going to enter into a time of worship, the ministry of singing unto the Most High God. We want you to involve yourself. Be a partaker of this blessing as we go forward in strength in Jesus' name. Praise God.
takes care of us. We know that his love for us is unending. It's without measure. And we give him all the praise and glory because he's worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wherever you are, if you could just lift your hands, lift your voices to the Lord. He's a mighty God. We bless you, Jesus.
Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise Him, hallelujah. He is worthy of all of the praise, all of the honor. Whatever overflow is coming, hallelujah, we honor that right now. This is an opportunity that you have, praise God, to let your voice be heard in the name, hallelujah, higher than every name. Praise God, hallelujah. And as we continue off the strength of our worship, looking forward to an incredible word coming in due season, we want to, in the spirit of the honoring that we're bestowing and placing and pouring out onto our mothers, ask that you pay close attention to the screen for a very quick Mother's Day tribute in Jesus' name. What I love most about my mom is the thing that I love most about my mother is the one thing I love about my mom is most about my mother is just the thing I love most about my mom is the, the things we love, love most about, about our mothers are she works so hard and inspires me to do the same the kindness she shows towards my siblings and I and to the people around her she's the best mom in the world because she's loving, caring, and forgiving her strength. And, you know, no matter what life throws her way, she continues to persevere and just have a smile on her face and still have the biggest heart and compassion towards others. How persistent and how caring she is of me and my brother. Is that she's caring because she's always there for us. The thing I love the most about my mom is that she's loving because she's so cuddly. Because she is most loving and kind. She always puts her children before herself, which is an attribute we can never thank her enough for. She has a heart for others that grows larger every single day. Growing up, she would bring us to church every single Sunday so that when we got older, faith would be a big part of our lives. The way how she shows love towards me. Because she's caring. Because she takes care of me when I'm sick. You're just not afraid to be you. Cause if anybody knows, Sister Jackie loves to take pictures. And I just remember you'll send me a text message and it'll be a picture of yourself and I'd be like, mom, who took that picture? You'd be like, oh, I just asked a stranger. That's you being you. She'd always make sure that we do the right things. Uh, make sure that we never really slacked off. She'd always be encouraging us to either um, like do our homework, uh, make sure to do our chores around the house. Uh, she established those things like early in our childhood. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate everything you've done for me. Her amazing cooking. While I was away at university, I would always look forward to coming home to her home-cooked meals that were made with so much love. How caring she is and how open she is. Mom, if you were here right now, we would tell you. We love and appreciate you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Mom, if you were standing right here beside me, I would let you know that there's not enough words to show my appreciation and gratitude for everything that you do for me. I love you so much, and I just want to say Happy Mother's Day. And Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I really got to thank her for that, because without that, I don't know where I'd be. 
today on issues here. I just want to say happy Mother's Day, Mom. I want to thank you for everything that you've done for me, Javen, and um, you're a very strong woman. I thank God that you blessed me with such a wonderful mother. Thanks, Mom. We love and cherish you and pray for nothing but God's richest blessings over your life. And we want to thank you for your continued support towards all of our goals, dreams, and aspirations. Most of all, I would like to say thank you for being a shoulder to lean on, a confidant, and a friend. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I just want to say that you're the most lovingest person, cuddling person, and you're so inspiring and beautiful. Shit time! Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day! Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise God, hallelujah. And so this uh, small token, this small tribute, praise God, is not able to represent all of the beautiful faces, the beautiful spirits that are the mothers in Zion but it is with all of them in mind, each and every one of them, that we say the most proud, honest, true, loving, happy Mother's Day to you who make all of us who we are, who have contributed much more than what can be accounted for to so many lives in Zion. We love you, richly appreciate you, and are, are grateful that we get to share in this momentous occasion, loving on you, broadcasting and sharing this time and this hour with you. God bless you richly praise god amen and as we turn our attention to the hallelujah increase of the government of the most high and the broadcast hallelujah by which he comes through onto the nation in this hour we are transitioning into a time of giving praise god and we're going to get a chance to honor hallelujah this very day that the lord has made our tithes our offering the things that make the tangible effort to this ministry going forth in strength the expression of love from you who are watching and that which you seek to use to honor god hallelujah for all that he has done and continues to do in your life we're going to take up an offering praise god and we're going to pray over that offering right before we get the ministry of the word praise god and right now as you're preparing if you haven't already given this day praise god a gentle reminder hallelujah what shall we render unto jehovah who has done so many good and perfect things for each and every one of us uh, we, we we are in absolute debt and can no way pay it off praise God but use this time as best as you can to stretch forth your hand hallelujah as we seek to pray over that which is being given that those who are giving praise God those who are going to be a benefactor of those who are faithfully giving hallelujah now and perpetually and then we're going to transition into a posture of receiving from the servant of the hour the word of the most high praise god so let's pray wherever you are father we give you thanks and praise in your spirit in your name hallelujah we live we move we have our being we lord god are animated with life and eternal abundant life praise god at that and we hallelujah are so appreciative of that which you're doing praise god in all things we give you thanks right now lord god we seek to render unto you a tribute a token an offering praise god be it tithes be it love offering be it seeds hallelujah be it an expression of gratitude what's over thing lord god that that's that that giving is tied to we pray that you would receive it lord god we pray that you would do that thing which only you are able to do with it lord god that you would have your perfect will be done lord we thank you for those who see fit to be an honor hallelujah an honorable servant unto you and and those who see fit to give to that which is happening here we say thank you for them because we know it's by the help of the Lord, hallelujah. We ask you right now, Lord God, as we are transitioning into a time of receiving the word to bless your servant, Lord God, allow her to speak, Lord God, as if, Lord God, this was the last word that we would ever hear. Give her the strength, Lord God, to bring forth that which you have appointed for the hearers this hour. We ask that, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, and each and every one of us say, 
praise God, amen and amen. And so right now we have the distinct honor and privilege to bring to you one of our mothers in Zion, a faithful servant to preach the word of the Lord, Sister Ruth Channer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for another time to stand before you in this capacity. I want to echo the sentiments that have been going out throughout this day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers all over the world. It's truly amazing that God has blessed mothers with the ability to carry and bring to birth life. You know, in a sense, we ourselves are life givers and it's truly an honor and a privilege to be tasked with such a honorable duty. Amen. So once again, happy Mother's Day to you all and also to the fathers out there who, I know it's not Father's Day, but those who have had to stand in the gap when mothers have been absent, we say happy Mother's Day to you as well. Praise God. Amen. So there is a word from the Lord this evening. I won't be with you too long. Amen. So if you just grab your Bibles in your hand and your gadgets, whatever you have, and let us turn to the book of Genesis chapter 29. And we will read from 31 to 35. Amen. Before we do, I just want to greet everybody. Almost forgot. Greetings to you all and welcome once again, amen, to uh, APC online service. It's a pleasure to have you in the midst. It's a pleasure to have you logging online from wherever you are. May the Lord bless you and I pray that this word will be a blessing unto you. Amen. So we are going to read from Genesis 29, starting at verse 31. And it says, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Amen. Praise God. And for the time that is ours to spend today, I want to speak to you from the topic, it's time to praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody say, it's time to praise the Lord. Yes, you have been birthing a lot of things that's been trying to get man's attention, but it hasn't been working. And now you've come to the point where you say, I'm not trying to impress anybody anymore. I'm not going to try and make anybody love me, but I'm going to turn my attention to the Lord and give him praise. The songwriter said, when troubles in your life, said, sing praises. Amen. Praise God. So it is time to praise the Lord. And I begin in the book of Genesis, a few chapters up, and it seemed like Barrenness was a trend with the women of faith in Genesis. You have Sarah. Sarah was barren and uh, the Lord opened up her womb. And then there was Rebecca. Rebecca was barren. And Isaac prayed to the Lord and she conceived twins, but these were not no ordinary twins. But within Rachel's womb, there were two nations. The Bible says in Genesis 25 and 23 because she was having uh, trouble 
with them both in her womb. And she wondered what was going on. And the Lord has said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger Amen. And this was the prophecy that the Lord had spoken and we saw it begin to fulfill when Esau sold his birthright. And then we jump to Genesis chapter 7 where Isaac, you know, didn't know if he was going to live any longer. So he called Esau and told Esau, you know, go and make me some venison, the stew that you always make me and come and bring it to me and I'm going to bless you because I don't know how much longer I have to live. So Rebecca overhears this conversation uh, between uh, Isaac and Esau. And she probably remembered what the Lord had spoken about her having two nations in her stomach and, and that the younger is supposed to serve the elder. But it seemed like this wasn't going to happen. So she decided to take matters into her own hands. You know, it seems like we've been here before, you know, with Sarah and Abraham when she wasn't birthing a child. She decided to take matters into her own hands and, and have Hagar, you know, birth a child. But that wasn't God's plan. So now Rebecca comes up with a plan to make sure that what God had said would come to pass. You know, moms know best, right? But not at this time, not at this time. So therefore she, uh, you know, and we want to bring it to the here and now, you know, many of us can relate to this, trying to take things into our own hands. We hear the voice of the Lord, uh, God said he was going to provide for us and, uh, and he doesn't look like he's moving fast enough. So we decide to help God along, give him a little hand or, uh, and, you know, we decide to take matters into our own hands and it causes a lot of trouble for us. It may work out in the long run. But we went through a lot of trouble, more than what we were supposed to get it. Because, you know, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add if no heavy toil. Amen. So now we're stuck with the consequences of our actions of going before God. So now Rebecca tells Jacob how to steal the blessing from his brother, which is her son. And he does it and he works. You see, Jacob was Rebecca's favorite and Esau was Isaac's favorite. And as this is Mother's Day, let's talk mothers. You know, we got to be careful about having favorite children in our family. You know, and not everyone has a child of one and you may have two or three. And, uh, and then you start picking, this is my favorite son. This is my favorite daughter. And you don't realize the negative impact that it can have on your child. And it can ha impact them in a way that, that you can never imagine. And, and it sends messages also to the other, you know, the other children, the other siblings to make them believe that some way or another they don't match up. Some way or another, you know, they're not worthy of that love that you are doting on this one child. Uh, and we have to be careful when we do that because it is a breeding ground for, for low self-esteem. It's a breeding ground for contention and, and jealousy and envy and hatred and sibling rivalry, praise God. And I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm speaking from what I know, praise the Lord. So here we are. Jacob now is blessed because of what Rebecca did. He gets the blessing from Isaac, but at what cost? Because it took 20 years for him to see his brother again. Uh, Jacob had to leave the land from where he was because Esau was so upset that he, he planned in his mind that he was going to kill Jacob as soon as his father died. So he, flee. he fled and went to another country. So now Jacob leaves his home and he journeys to Haran and he ends up at a well. And there he meets Rachel. And with Rachel, he returns to uh, her home and sees her father, Laban, and Laban wel welcomes him. Uh, and um, then uh, Jacob stays with Laban for about a month. And it comes to a time where Laban's, Laban is like, you've been working for me for so long, you know, um, I need to pay you wages. Tell me how much you want, you know, for, for, for working for me. And... Um, Jacob, he didn't want any money. His eyes were set on Rachel. 
And the Bible says that in Genesis 29, 16, 17, that Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And he goes on to say that Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Amen. So now there are a few interpretations about what the Bible meant by Leah being t- tender-eyed. And um, I learned, you know, in school that, you know, these three-letter words, and and but, is a conjunction. But with but, it contrasts something that was previously mentioned. So, you know, for example, you say, the devil thought he had me, but I got away. Amen. So when the Bible says, but Rebecca was beautiful and well-favored, Well, then it meant that Leah was not the prettiest flower in the garden. You know, Rebecca was probably a rose and Leah was a a dandelion or something. But we're just going to leave it there. Amen. So the Bible says that Jacob, he loved Rachel. Yes, he did. He He loved Rachel. And he said that he would work seven years for her because he loved her so much. And those seven years seemed like nothing to Jacob because he loved her so much. And when his time was complete, he came to Laban and he said, okay, you know, give me my wife. And Laban was like, okay, let's have a feast. We're going to have a feast and we're going to celebrate this coming together. Amen. But what Jacob didn't realize was that he was getting tricked. You know, Jacob had enjoyed himself so much that when he went to his bedchamber, it wasn't Leah that was in there, but it wasn't Rachel that was in there, but Laban had sent Leah in there. And it wasn't until the next morning when he woke up, what a surprise, surprise he saw that morning when he turned over and he saw tender-eyed Leah instead of beautiful Rachel. Amen. Amen. And it just goes to show what goes around comes around. Jacob was known as the trickster, but this time he got tricked, or as we say, the player got played in this scenario. Amen. So when he went to labor and he said, what are you doing? You know, what, what has happened here? I said, I wanted Rachel. You gave me Leah. And that's when Laban says, oh, did you not read the fine print? Did I forget to mention that it was custom that the older daughter had to be married first before the younger one? So he's like, just fulfill the week of, of festivities because marriage back in the day wasn't just for one day. It lasted a whole week. It was a whole week of just festivities and, uh, and, and having fun. Amen. So there he f- had to fulfill his week-long duty to Leah, and after that he would have Rachel. Amen. So this is what he did. And can you imagine Leah, amen, being with someone who doesn't want to be with you? You know, even in that moment when she went into his bedchamber, he thought he was with Rachel, And knowing that you're there, but he's not calling your name. He's calling Rachel's name. Amen. And, and, you know, I just, for, for us ladies out there, you know how angry, even if you say it by mistake, you know, we can tend or, or to get quite upset, but imagine that she knew that this was a scheme, this wasn't true, that she was trying to be, she was sent in under the guise of being someone else, and here he was, maybe telling her how much he loved her and how much, how beautiful she was, but it wasn't really Rachel, it was Leah. And now she is in a love triangle that she didn't really have much to do with. She was obeying her father. So before we want to jump on Jacob, because Jacob loved Rachel, and at the end of the week, he went with Rachel, he married Rachel, and he lived with Rachel. And everyone say, you might want to say that was bad, but you have to understand Jacob never wanted Leah, no way, you know, and he made that clear. It was Rachel that he wanted. So here we are, now Leah is a wife in a loveless marriage. You know, I know it's Mother's Day and it's supposed to be a good message, but you stay with me. It's going to get better. Amen. Praise God. So Jacob, he performed his husband duties probably by taking care and providing for Leah, but there was no real relationship. 
you know, and that's what marriage requires to have a relationship. You know, you can't have really much a marriage without relationship. And I can draw reference to the church. The Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. Amen. And Jesus requires relationship with us. But many of us are acting like Jacob. We are just showing up to perform our so-called Christian duties. I made a commitment, but uh, I'm just showing up, but I'm not really in love with Jesus. Amen. I'm here physically, but my heart is somewhere else. That's why the Bible tells us in 1 John 2 verse 15 to, to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because if any man love the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in this world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the of, of the flesh and the pride of life. And this is not from the Father. So it is not possible to say that you love Jesus and you spend no time with him. It is not possible to say that you love Jesus, you're in relationship with him and you don't spend time reading the word that tells you all about him. And it's not possible to say that you love Jesus and you have no prayer life. I know you may not like it, but it doesn't change the truth of the matter. Whatever you love, you will put effort into. So here, Jacob loves Rachel. So he stays with her. And Leah is left as a loveless wife, you know, and she couldn't just walk away from this marriage and she couldn't file for divorce. Hello, we're in the book of Genesis. Divorce wasn't even a thing in the book of Genesis. Amen. So here she is. She's staying to make the best out of a bad situation. Amen. Amen. And I realized that with Leah, she had longevity. She had long suffering. She was willing to stay you know, at no matter what the cost, even at the cost of her own self, she was staying, amen. And sometimes we may, that's a problem that we have in this world. We have too many options. Sometimes when, when things are not working out, it's so easy for us just to walk away. You know, the job is not cutting it for you. You just leave it and get another one. Marriage isn't working, then we can divorce and get a new one. Uh, you're not recognized at the church, you can leave and get a new one. You don't agree with what the doctor doctrine is or what the pastor is saying that you can go ahead and find another church but I want to know if there's anybody in this cyber sanctuary who can be like Aaliyah amen that you know what I know the situation isn't the greatest right now it's not looking the best but I am still gonna stay because I know that God has a plan for my life amen amen praise God say I don't understand it right now it may seem hard right now but I'm gonna stay in it because I know that promotion and it doesn't come from the north or the south. My promotion, my validation is not in a man. It's not in my job. It's not in my car. It's not in my money. But promotion, it says, comes from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So then we go to Genesis chapter 29 and 31. And the Bible says, And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. Amen. When the Lord saw. Somebody say, when the Lord saw. Amen. See, it's one thing for man to see you. But it's another thing when God sees you. You see, our sight is limited to what's in our peripheral vision. Even as I'm standing here right now, I can't see what is behind me. Amen. Without turning around. And even with us today, we rely on media platforms to show us, amen, what's happening in our city and around the world. You know, we could say once upon a time, we were able to see each other face to face. Once upon a time, it's like a story, you know, uh, uh, we could see and be in contact with each other. But now we are limited to seeing one another over a computer or a TV screen. And though we appreciate the, uh, the advancements in technology, they are great. It is not without it's, limita it's, it's not without its limitations. But how many of us are so glad that we serve an omniscient God? Amen. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth, throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who have devoted himself, devoted themselves to him. Amen. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The 
eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. So when we can't see, we have this, 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 this joy and this hope and this confidence that God sees. Amen. So when nobody sees you, my brother and my sister, know that God sees you. And I want to tell everyone who's watching online that the Lord, he sees you. He sees what you're going through and he's about to open up your womb and bless you right in the presence of your enemies. So don't give up serving the Lord. Keep on going on. Praise God as the preacher preached this morning to say, I am staying. Amen. Leaving is not an an option. Amen. So here we are, Leah. Amen. God saw Leah. Leah, who was the hated one. Praise God. God saw her and he opened up her womb, but Rachel was barren. You know, all eyes were on Rachel. Rachel's the beautiful one. Rachel's the favored one. Rachel is the, the one who was most likely to succeed. I can imagine people saying, oh my goodness, Rachel, when you have babies, your babies are going to look so cute. But her womb was closed because God had shut up her womb. That's why we ought to not judge people on the outward appearance and what we see. Amen. Because the Lord had said to Samuel when he told Samuel he's going to instill another king instead of Saul. And Samuel went down to the house. Amen. And, and tried to look on all the sons of Jesse and who was going to be the one that was anointed king. Amen. And, and the Lord said to Samuel not to look on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him for the Lord seeth not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord he looks on the heart I'm so glad that God sees beyond what we look like amen he looks beyond our physical appearance and he sees what's in our heart amen so that the Bible says the Lord opens up Leah's womb and she conceived and bare a son and she called his name Reuben. For she said, surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Amen. Reuben's name means see, behold, a son. So now Leah was a mother. And having a son was a great honor, you know, because she was securing the legacy um, of her husband. You know, the father's name would be carried on. And more importantly, she birthed a seed of Abraham. Amen. So she was fulfilling the prophecy that the Lord had spoken to Abraham that, you know, his, seeds would be, his seed was, would be multiplied. Amen. But the joy of motherhood was shrouded by the fact that she was an unloved wife. She, through having a child, thought that Jacob would love me. Now he would love me because I've given birth to his seed. Amen. Now he would love me because not only did I give a seed, I gave a son. And I'm securing his legacy. And the Bible says that children are a heritage of the Lord. And happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. But Jacob's lack of love for Leah remained unchanged. You know, she tried to prove her worth through bearing a son, but that was not the reason why the Lord had opened up her womb. You see, the Lord sees the end from the beginning, and what he was bringing out of her was something far more greater than the love that Jacob could ever give her. He was bringing out of her the tribes of Israel. Amen. He was bestowing upon Leah a greater honor, more than what she could ever imagine. And I realize that God doesn't need all the conditions to be right, to bless you. Amen. Because if God had to wait on conditions to be right for us to be blessed, then we would never be blessed. Amen. And sometimes we do it to our own self. We want to make sure that all our ducks are in a row, all our lines are in order before we start to do something. Amen. We'll say, you know what? Uh, um, sometimes when, when things get better, you know, then I'll do this or, or when the lockdown's over, I'll do this, amen, or when I make more money, then I can do this, or maybe like me, when the weather gets better, I'll start working out, whichever one it is, praise God, I'm just going to tell you, don't wait for the conditions to be right, you need to go ahead and do it now, tell somebody, do it now, amen, whatever it is that God has put in your heart, just go ahead, just do it, amen, praise God, so Leah conceived and bare 
children under hostile environments. And you ask me, how was it hostile? Well, the Bible said that her sister envied her. Uh, Rachel resented her because she was able to have a child. And Jacob, he still didn't love her, you know. And it was that hostile condition that each time the Lord blessed Leah with another baby. And even though God was blessing Leah, she couldn't get past Jacob. You know, Leah was overjoyed with the fact that she was creating a legacy but still felt complete. So here she births Simeon. And Simeon's name means heard. She said, because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son. And she called his name Simeon. You know, first when we read, it said God saw. And now we're saying God heard. Praise God. Amen. The scripture said, I love the Lord because he hath heard my cry and he had pitied every groan when Jonah was in the belly of the fish he said out of the depths of hell I cried and my cry came up to God and he heard and he delivered me praise God and here amen the Lord heard amen that that Leah was hated so he blessed her again so tell your haters keep on hating me because you hating me is getting me blessed amen praise the Lord so then she conceived a third time and she bore a son and she said now this time my husband will be joined unto me because I have bore him three sons therefore was his name called Levi which means joyed amen but still leave um, but still Jacob's love didn't change towards Leah. And in all that the Lord blessed Leah with, her heart could not be satisfied because her affection was set in the wrong place. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us to not to set our affections on things above and not on things of the earth because you'll never be satisfied if your affections are set here on carnal things. Amen. Because they cannot satisfy. And I want to ask, what does Jacob re represent in your life? Life. Amen. You keep on producing. God keeps on blessing you, but you still can't get past the fact that Jacob doesn't love you. Jacob doesn't recognize you. Jacob doesn't see you. Amen. But I want to tell you, you got to get past Jacob. Amen. And see what the Lord is doing in your life. So up to this point, she had birthed three sons and her situation hadn't changed given birth to three sons, but still not loved. Amen. Praise God. But on this fourth time around, amen, something seemed to change in Leah. She changed her perspective. Situation didn't change, but her perspective changed. And I think maybe she began to think about the goodness of God and all that he had done for her. She thought on how good God had been to her, you know, like the song, you know, God has been good to me. He's been so good to me more than in this world or Jacob could ever be. He has been so good to me. He has dry wiped all my tears away and he's turned my darkness into day. So instead of complaining, I'm just going to lift my hands and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Because sometimes we get so caught up in what we want or what we don't have that we don't realize what God has been providing for us all along. Maybe she looked back and said, when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, it's going to make me want to go all the way. Amen. Sometimes my burden's heavy and sometimes my burden is light. But when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me. Amen. And she began to reminisce how she birthed three sons. Amen. And she might have said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done done for me then my soul cries out hallelujah I thank God that he has kept me praise God so here she gave birth to another son amen and her situation she was no longer looking on Jacob's gonna love me Jacob's gonna want me but she said now will I praise the Lord so she called his name Judah which means praise amen 
So she decided I'm not going to wait till things get better. I'm going to praise the Lord right now. So even though my husband may not love me, it's time for me to praise the Lord. Even though my sister, she don't like me, it's time to praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you tonight. There may be trouble in your home, but you got to say, it's time to praise the Lord. My children may not be acting right, but it's time to change the Lord, to praise the Lord. My situation, it hasn't changed, but it's time to praise the Lord. For I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praises, they shall continually be in my mouth. Which means when I'm sick, I'm going to praise the Lord. When I'm sad, I'm going to praise the Lord. Through my tears, I'm going to praise the Lord. When I don't know what to do, I'm going to praise the Lord. When I don't know which way to go, I'm going to praise the Lord. In the good times, I'm going to praise the Lord. In the bad times, I'm going to praise the Lord. In my midnight, I'm going to praise the Lord. Why? Because the Bible tells me that when Peter was locked up in jail, but it stops, amen. Situation wasn't looking good. May not have been the right time to praise God. But the Bible says that at midnight, Peter and Silas, they began to pray and sing praises. In their midnight situation, hallelujah, they sang unto God. And the Bible says the foundation of the prison began to shake. And everybody in the prison, their bonds were loose. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you, somebody, no matter what your situation, lift up your head and praise the Lord. For Psalms 150, verse 1 says, praise you, the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbre and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him a praise. Wherever you are, say, now I'm going to praise Him. Right now, I'm going to praise Him. In my home, I'm going to praise Him. Come on, let's praise Him. Offer up a praise unto the Lord. Come on, let's take a 30 second praise break and offer your praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise Him. Amen. For you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. So I got a reason to shout. I got a reason to raise my hands. I got a reason to leap for joy. I got a reason to dance. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to praise Him. Not tomorrow. Not next week. But right now. Anybody got a right now praise? Right now praise. A right now praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. I'm a praise him in advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise him in advance. I don't know when he's gonna do it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I'll praise him on credit, but his credit's good with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to praise him, saints. 
the Lord hallelujah so the Bible says Leah when she made that declaration she stopped bearing but it wasn't complete she didn't stop all the way the Bible goes on to say that she bare two more two more children two more sons and one daughter amen so when I look at this amen Leah was unloved and she was rejected but out of that rejection Amen. God blessed her with six of the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. And she birthed Levi. And we may be familiar with Levi because they are the Levites. Amen. They were the priesthood that God had set apart to offer up the sacrifices. Amen. In the tabernacle. Amen. And she also birthed Judah. Amen. Judah, praise, which was the royal line. Amen. Out of that lineage came King David. And ultimately, Jesus Christ, amen, came through, amen, the tribe of Judah. Amen. I remember when, 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 when Isaac, when Jacob was blessing his sons and he blessed Judah and he said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Amen. So Judah held that line lineage. Amen. Until Jesus came. Amen. And we know that that Jesus is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords and he will one day put everything under his feet. Amen. One day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. So out of Leah's rejection she birthed praise and I want to encourage you listening out tonight that whatever you may feel separated from, whatever you may feel rejected rejected from. Amen. Don't let it bring you down. Don't let it hold you down. But out of that birth a praise in your spirit. Amen. Birth a praise unto God. Amen. Because he has not forsaken you. He sees you and he hears you as the scripture said. Amen. So say to yourself, whatever I'm going through, I'm still going to praise the Lord. Amen. Because every day is a good day to praise Praise the Lord. Every time is a great time to praise the Lord. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Amen. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. For he's worthy. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. We thank God that he dwells in the praises of his people. Amen. And his ears are open unto the cry of his people. And I want to speak to those watching online. Amen. You're going through some hard situations and you don't understand what is happening. You may be like Leah. You may have said, I didn't sign up for this, but I'm willing to press through all the way. But it's not easy for me. Every time the Lord blesses me, I'm reminded that I'm not loved. Every time the Lord blesses me, somehow or another, 
something shows up in my life to make me feel like it's not worth it. Amen. But I want to encourage you that Jesus sees you, he hears and he knows. Amen. And for those of you who have not surrendered your life to Jesus, amen. Amen. I, I, I implore you, I encourage you that Jesus came to take away the pain. He came to take away your sin debt. Amen. He, he came to lift the heavy burden that you are carrying. You were never meant to carry it. Amen. Because Jesus died to destroy that yoke and that bondage that you are tied in. Amen. So I encourage you to give your life to Jesus. Amen. We say it's time to praise the Lord, but it's time to give your life to Jesus. Every day is a good day to surrender to Him. Every day is a good day. Amen. To give your heart to Him. The Bible says now is the acceptable time of the Lord. And if you hear the Lord calling, harden not your heart. Amen. With our eyes closed and our heads bowed. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Amen. We rejoice in you, Lord God. You are the God of our salvation. Amen. You put a joy in our heart. Amen. You put a song in our heart and praises on our lips. Amen. And we bless you and we glorify your name for the wonderful things that you continually do in our lives. And I pray, Lord God, that as we go through our days, amen, that we will have a grateful heart. I pray for a grateful people, Lord Jesus, that we will give thanks in all things. Hallelujah. For this is your will concerning us. I pray your blessing upon every person who will hear this message. I pray that that burdens will be lightened tonight, this very day, hallelujah, that yokes will be destroyed, amen, that that which may have had us bound through the praises that we have offered have loosed us, amen, from the chains and we give all the glory, all the honour to you because you are worthy of it all. In the name of Jesus, we say amen and amen. Let's put our hands together once again for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I want to thank you for joining us online. Amen. And once again, don't forget to visit our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all the social media platforms. Amen. So you can be a part of this great, wonderful family of God. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and may the Lord lift up his kindness upon you and give you peace for the name of the Lord is upon you and the Lord, he will bless you. Praise the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.